First of all, a very warm welcome to all the delegates who have come here. Thanks for being a part of this uh, deliberation today. Uh, our chief guest, Mr. Jagmin Takpa, will be joining us in 10 minutes. We would like to welcome Mr. Ravi Singh, CEO and Secretary General, WWF India. Thanks sir, for being with us. Dr. B.P. Thapial, Director, Center and Paper Research Institute. Nice to have you here, sir. Dr. Rakesh Kumar Jain, Technical Expert, International Center for Inclusive and Sustainable Industrial Development. And Dr. Kapil Nerula, Executive Director and CEO, CI Thivini Water Institute, who he and his team have done a great job in organizing this conference for fourth year in running. Thanks a lot. To start off, I can share some data. Maybe I'll start with sharing some data, which all of you may be aware of, and then we'll come down to the basic issues. We are all aware of the water crisis, especially this year, June month has been, I think, the lowest rainfall in the last 50 years, 32 or 33 percent lower than normal. And there is absolute water cry everywhere. And I'm told today morning, Prime Minister has uh, taken a decision that 75 percent of the money from Narega will be used for conserving water and saving water. I mean, I must appreciate the Prime Minister who understands the needs of the, of the people. And uh, today, I was sitting with Mr. Pandey, and he was sharing with me about the story of uh, Prime Minister Modi. Then on 15th August, when he talked about toilets for Indian wo men and women, many people were surprised. On 15th August, earlier days, people used to talk of big, big things. Somebody talking about toilets on 15th August from uh, Redford was shocking news for everybody. But what has happened five years after that? People have voted for Mr. Modi. You know, some of these basic things we don't, all of us have a decent house. By and large, those people who are sitting here have a good house, a clean water source, a good place to go to the toilet. But imagine the people in the rural villages, you know, where the women have to get up at 3, 3.30 in the morning and go to the toilet, you know. Now imagine the, 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 the happiness, the pride, the respect they do when they have a toilet in the house. A small, not a small thing, it's a big thing, but a small stake in by the Swachh India mission and great job. And now, Prime Minister, I'm very happy that Prime Minister Modi has uh, understood the needs of the country. I suppose understanding many people have, but to take the right decision at the right time is what is important. And he's promised that in five years, water will be supplied to each and every home in all villages in the next five years. But for that, water has to be available, either in the rivers or underground. Now I'm told the data, which I'll share with you, that 80% of the river basin in the country are water stressed. In many parts of India, ground water is declining by over three feet per year, year after year. And as per Niti Ayok, currently 600 million Indians face extreme water stress conditions. Along with this water, water is available. The quality of water is also getting deteriorated and is not fit for human consumption. Now, with all these problems, we in the paper industry work very hard to grow the paper industry. The demand for packaging every year you know, is a direct correlation with the GDP. And uh, the Indian GDP is growing at around 6 to 7%. And we all want that the GDP should grow by 9 to 10% so that everybody can grow, do better, uh, do better get our uh, average income increase so that we have a better quality of life. The basic purpose of all of us, whether you're in government, private sector, or anything, is to improve the quality of life. And all of us work towards it. Now, with all this, the basic needs of water has to be met. Paper industry is, I won't call it a guzzler. It used to be a guzzler of water once upon a time. A lot of work has happened over the years. And we have uh, you know, uh, acted responsibly 
So I was saying, people this was once upon a time a guzzler of water. But the last 25, 30 years, I've been working in this industry for the last 40 years, and I've seen a lot of work done by all of us to reduce the water consumption over the years. Uh, just to give you an idea, everybody knows about it. The big paper mills used to use something like 120, 230 meter cube of water per ton of pulp and paper, and today it has come down to 35 to 40. Still, there is a lot of uh, scope for reducing the water consumption. I was in Finland last week and I was uh, attending one of the technical conference where the, one of the biggest suppliers of the equipment suppliers in the world was sharing with them the new technology. And the full day I was sitting with them, I heard a lot of things on what new technology is going to improve quality, do this, do that, reduce uh, energy conservation by 30 to 40 percent. Very impressive, but not a single word or not a single technology was discussed to reduce the water consumption in the pulp and paper industry. I, coming from India, knowing the situation, was a bit horrified and very disturbed. So I raised the question, why are we not working on reducing water consumption in the pulp and paper industry? It's a critical thing. And as usual, there is, the response was, in Finland and Sweden and the rest of the, there's plenty of water available. So that's not a focus area for us. Now, if that's not the focus area for them, it is the focus area for all of us. So we'll have to find our own ways and means and keep pushing the equipment suppliers to reduce the water consumption, you know, bring in new technologies. So when we discuss with them, let's keep the pressure on, on all this world supply, that they may have plenty of water in their country, but many of the countries are in need to reduce the water consumption. But you know, that is a relatively easier job. That can be done and it will be done. My biggest issue is the basic availability of water. I was telling Kapil yesterday, I can reduce water consumption from 100 to 35, 40. But even the 40 is required to run the pulp and paper industry. No? Tomorrow, when you have a crisis and the rivers start running dry or the bore wells run dry, what will happen to all of us? The first acts will happen on the industry. Nobody will say, you reduce the water consumption, you've done this great, great things. They will say, just shut it down. Because drinking has to be given priority, agriculture has to be given priority. So the pulp and paper industry needs to do something beyond that. And that is to try and conserve water, save water, recharge the ground, and try and reduce the consumption in agriculture sector. Now it may look uh, a bit vague or stupid to say, should we focus on our uh, reducing the water consumption, or should we focus on the society around us? But gentlemen, ladies, let me tell you, if you don't do that, we'll all get affected. It's time we started looking outside our boundary limits. People in agriculture waste a lot of water, and that's because some of the policies of government, if I dare to criticize it, it's not been right of giving free power to the agriculture sector. So people just waste water, waste energy. Now, a lot of good practices can be done to re reduce the water consumption in the agriculture sector. Now, how it will benefit? When you reduce the water consumption in the agriculture sector, to that extent, water will get saved or conserved. The, the water table will not come down. And to that extent, water will become available. So besides working on reducing the water consumption inside your mill, we need to start looking outside. How do we keep recharging our groundwater? How do we reduce the water consumption in the agriculture sector? All of us do CSR, and uh, we are supposed to spend 2% of our uh, profit on CSR. Now, if we can link this CSR, not directly, because if you link it directly to your business needs, you will not be uh, eligible for that uh, CSR spending. But if we can link it indirectly to the needs of the society, if the part of the money, I know some of the senior people are there, but if we can convey this message to our senior people in the pulp and paper industry that part of the money of CSR or beyond CSR can be used for bringing down the water conservation, uh, consumption in the agriculture sector. 
by information, by training, by using modern techniques, it will help to re reduce the water drawn from the ground from the rivers. And that will help us in terms of need. Now, why I'm saying this with confidence is because we in our computer uh, plant have started doing it and we have been able to achieve a 35 to 40% reduction in the water consumption for the agriculture sector. The farmers are very happy. Now it's not about, this is about two years. In the next five years, we want to continue to do all these kind of things. So that's very important that we do that. Even small things inside the mill. You know, all of us start with a small mill, one machine, one thing, and gradually we, we expand. And this is what I'm telling you out of my practical experience. And what happens when you put up a machine, you add some open space, that open space gets filled up with concrete. Now earlier, whenever the rainwater used to happen or fall, it used to get recharged in the ground level. So normally all of us have a effluent treatment plant. So in our case, we put up a new boiler. What happened along with the boiler, we concreted the area around us. It just happened in February, March. And come monsoon, there was a heavy rains. Now earlier, this water used to get absorbed in that open space. Heavy rains, the concrete ground, no water absorption. All that water went into the effluent treatment plant and flooded the effluent treatment plant, spoiled the, the, the BOD, COD. Now earlier, we used to recharge it. Not only that got stopped, even the operations got disturbed. Now these are all small, small things we all need to do it. You know, in our, inside the mill, we need to keep open areas where the water gets charged. It may look very simple, you know, but these are the steps that we all need to take to recharge the ground level whatever way possible. And uh, majority of the mills in India are based on uh, groundwater. Things go well if Prime Minister Modi's scheme and all of us awaken and get right and we recharge the groundwater, it will be good. The crisis may not be there. But in case it doesn't happen, and Kapil will uh, share with you the, the state of the, the industry and the, the country is caring. It's all for that. So we'll wait for anything. But I think time has come beyond now conserving water in the pulp and paper industry. We need to go beyond that. Try and conserve water outside our area. Try and re recharge the rivers and uh, groundwater. In fact, we in Badrachalam are working as a part of again a part of CSR to recharge the ponds, the areas, so that the Godavari Basin can be recharged. Godavari, which was a perennial river, last 40 years. This year was a very bad year. Water flow has come down. We were about to shut our mill. Luckily, just about survived. In fact, heavy water plant, which is based there, had to shut the operation because of, there was no water. So you'll hear, but these things don't get talked because industry, industry is not so critical. Realistic. If it happens to the agriculture sector, there will be a lot of news about it. So let's uh, understand that if we have to survive, if we have to thrive in the long run, we need to focus on water, water, water. Yeah, there will be other problems, but today the need of the hour is to get it. And I'm thankful to CI to organize the seminar so that we can make people aware of the crisis looming in the country and work towards it. So thank you ladies and gentlemen, and let's hope that uh, this conference will throw some more light, some more insights, and when you go back home, please convey this message to your colleagues, to your top management, the need of the hour. Thank you and have a great day for that. Thank you very much.